Today, we're looking at how to add product variant swatches to your Shopify store. Many of you liked the previous color swatch video that we made, and in it, you asked for some additional features. So today, we've got an updated version that's generalized for any variant, and we've got a lot of additional features in there as well. So let's take a look. So we're going to look at the demo store of what we're actually going to be doing in this video. And you can see the color swatches and the material swatches are added to the store here. So this video, we're going to talk about the product page specifically. Now, if you want to actually add it to your collection page as well, we can do that. And we can even make them clickable, which was a, which is a new feature that wasn't available before that we've also solved. Um, I'm going to have that in the next video. You can find that video in the description below. But for now, we're just going to focus on our product page swatches. You can see here that we've got some variant swatches. Uh, we've got color. Um, and so um, that this is what we implemented previously. Uh, but we also can add swatches for um, other variant types beyond color. So for example, here it's got uh, material. Um, we've got also uh, some styling so that if the variant is out of stock, that it will show that. So gray it out and cross it out. Um, we also have this text here. So normally when you use uh, the buttons with Dawn theme, you can see that the text is in the button itself. Uh, but if you change your variant selector to swatches, that text goes away. So we've just added that beside the, the label there. So every time you change it, it'll change the color. Or if you change the material, it'll change um, to the, the selection type. So we've got cotton or polyester, and we've got uh, these different colors here. We also have it so that um, the default image is going to be the variant image. So here, so black is going to be associated with this image here. So um, if we don't specify an image to use in the swatch, it'll just default to the actual image of the uh, variant. Um, so here you can actually see a little bit of both, right? So we've got three of them with the default shirt color and then two that are this uh, these different images that we've uploaded. Okay, so let's take a look at adding this to our store. We've installed a fresh new Dawn theme. So this is Dawn version 12. We haven't made any updates to it. And we also know it works on Dawn 11 because that's where this is the uh, the demo that I'm showing here. It was added to Dawn version 11. So we'll do it on Dawn 11 and 12. So let's go into our code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new snippet, which we will call product variant swatch custom dot liquid. Okay. And we're just going to copy and paste our code in here. And we're going to need to update uh, your shop name to um, your shop name. Um, so in our case, it's prompted demo. And I'm going to save that. So this is where any uploaded files are going to be stored. Next, we're going to go into the product variant picker file. And we're going to look for the loop for option in product.options with values. Um, and in here, we see that there's a field set. And so this is where it renders the um, normal way to uh, render product variants. And so we're actually going to replace this part. So I'm just going to create some spaces so that we can see that a little better. And we also are going to add some uh, some code on top of this as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste our code underneath this. Right. So we've got um, a new field set being um, defined where it uses the old one by default. Um, but if there are swatches to be added, it will render the liquid uh, snippet that we just created right here. And then on top of that, you're going to see um, some variables being created. So these variables are to access the meta objects that we're going to create a little bit later. And um, those meta objects are going to specify the swatch file names, um, swatch images that are going to be used in our uh, custom snippet. So let's just save that. OK. And Finally, we are going to um, create a, uh, an asset. 
and this is going to be a JavaScript file. And we're going to call this uh, product variant selection custom. Okay, so we're going to create that. And we're just going to copy and paste our JavaScript file in here and save. And then we're going to come back to our uh, product variant picker and scroll to the very bottom and call our JavaScript at the bottom here. OK? Uh, and that's the code. Um, now we need to create the meta objects. Uh, but first, what we can do is we can actually um, take a look at our store. So if we open up the store, we're going to see that um, it's just buttons right now. So um, once we add our meta objects, we're going to start. We're going to actually see that these turn into swatches. So for now, it's still defaulting to the uh, to the normal buttons that it's being set in the DOM theme. So we're going to now create a meta object. We're going to go to settings, custom data, um, and then add a definition for a meta object. And we're going to call this um, variant swatch map. And you're going to want to use the exact same names as I'm using here because it's hard coded into the code that we added previously. Um, so that'll just save you some headaches if you, uh, in case you decide to use a different name. So for now, just keep it the same name um, so that the code can actually find the meta object. OK, and so we're going to use a single line uh, text first as a first field, and we're going to call this title again. The code is looking for this specific name here, so so use the same one. And you're going to make this a required field. Um, we'll add, and then we're going to add a JSON uh, field type as well. And we're going to call this variant images JSON. And again, um, we're going to want to use the exact same name here because the code is looking for it. OK, we're going to say required field. And then we have to add a schema. So we're going to copy and paste our schema in here. And we're going to add and save. OK, so now we can come back out and go to our content area. And we can add an entry. And we can call this uh, a variant swatch map type. And we're going to create the entry called variant swatch mapping. And again, our code is looking for this exact title. Um, with this, uh, this exact handle. And so we're going to want to keep that the same. Just going to quickly jump back into the code. Um, there's a line that I missed when copy and pasting. It's this one right here. Um, and it's just to uh, assign the, the entry name that we created. So variant swatch mapping, that's the one that we created right here. So if you do want to change that to something different, make sure it matches exactly with what you have here. OK, so we're going to save this. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to paste in our JSON. And so right now here I have the structure of a variant name, variant value, and variant swatch. And so the name here has to match the um, variant title of your products. So if we actually go to our products area, and look at our shirt, we're going to see here in the variance area, once it loads, there's a material, color, and size. So in here, you're going to have to actually use the exact same uh, name as you have in here. So if, if it doesn't exist, if there's no match, then it's not going to find it. So in our case, we have both material and color. Um, so it knows to replace the variance here, material and color. And then after that, it's going to look for the value. So cotton, polyester, blue, and green. Again, it's going to have to match exactly what you have here, cotton, polyester, uh, say blue and green. Um, and it is case sensitive as well. So watch out for that. Um, and then finally, you're going to say what image you want to use to replace the, um, the default image. So. If you specify nothing, so in this case, we have blue and green, but we don't have um, black, red, or white, then it will default to the black variant image, which is the 
the image of the, the shirt. And same thing with red and white. It'll just default to the red and white shirts here. But blue and green will be replaced. So um, I've already, I've already um, uploaded some files for that. So you can see here, if we go to our files section, we've got, uh, we've got our green image, we've got a blue, um, and we've also got some the cotton and polyester images in there. Um, so we just need to make sure that we have the exact name and file extension that, uh, that we've uploaded. So cotton.jpg is, um, is what we're using here, right? So cotton.jpg. And we're just going to save. And now if we refresh, we should see those swatches uh, show up. OK, there we go. So now we have swatches for our material and our colors. Um, this can work for any variant option that you choose. So um, it doesn't have to be material color. It really can be anything you want. Um, you just have to make sure that the variant name that you have in the product matches exactly with the variant name that you're going to put into the JSON file. So essentially what happens is any variant name that you add to the JSON file is going to be transformed into a swatch based on the details that you add to the JSON file. So the JSON file is sort of your central area that controls which, um, which variants get a swatch and which ones don't. So for example, if I uh, take out these material, um, actually let's just take out the color, uh, the color options here and we save that. Then when we come back and refresh our page, you're gonna see that these are gonna default uh, back to the buttons. See, there we go. So now that they're back to the buttons. Um, the other thing to watch out for is um, let's add back the uh, let's add back our uh, colors. Okay, so now that we've added back our colors, you can see here that if we only added blue or green in this case, that the blue and green will show up, and then we've got um, our black, red, and white defaulting to the to the variant images. So let's say you want to change variant swatches so that they're all just the default variant images. So instead of having this uh, these blue and green images, they're all just the shirts. So we can come back to our JSON file, and we can just actually remove any files in here. So as long as you have one variant uh, entry for the variant name that you're looking for, so in this case, color. Um, it could be, um, we have color green, color blue, for example, but you only need one of them. Uh, and then you have the variant swatch as blank, so there's no file. Then when we save it, it's going to default to the, um, to the variant image. So once we refresh, we can see that the um, variant images are now the default images. Uh, now, we do have to be a little bit careful because um, this works well for, in this example, the color variants. But let's say we have the size variants. Um, let's just do a little quick example here. So let's say we add some entries for the size variant. So I've got this image for extra small and an image for small. And we'll save. And we're going to refresh. OK, so now you can see that these images are showing up. But now you also see that it, because it defaults to the variant image, um, in this case, because we've selected black, it's going to be the black shirt for every single one of these sizes because that's the default um, image that we have for all these different sizes of black. Um, if we refreshed, uh, sorry, if we uh, choose a different color and refresh the page, it all turned to blue because that's the default image for all these different sizes with the color blue. So um, in cases like this, you're going to want to either make sure that you either don't have a swatch in the JSON file, or you make sure that all the different options are covered with an image. Um, otherwise, you're going to have some, this this might not work so well. But for colors, yes, that, that will work well. And, and you can see right here how that, how that, um, how that works. 
Uh, but one other question that I've gone is, let's say we want to change these to a square. So how do we change the shape or even the size of these swatches? And so we'll take a quick look at that. So we can come back to our uh, product variant swatch custom dot liquid file. If we scroll to the bottom, you're going to see here uh, there's this style tag, and then within here is all CSS. So if you want to change the size of your swatches, you can see here the width and height. So we actually have a comment adjust for size uh, with these two. So let's say we want to make it a little bit bigger. We can change this to 50 pixels, and let's save that. And if we refresh. You see those circles become a little bit larger. Um, if we want to, uh, if we want to change it to a square, well, you have this border radius um, selector here. So we say fifty percent for circle, zero percent for square. So we can change this to zero percent. We'll save that, and if we refresh, now you have squares. And so it's that simple. You can add. Uh, change a shape if you want. Um, you can even change some of the uh, border styles if you want. So border colors, border widths. Some of these stylings, you can adjust it to your liking. Um, you can just kind of change some of these numbers around to uh, fit your own liking, customize it for yourself. So there we have it. This is the new and improved product variant swatches for your product page. We've added a few features like having it so that you can default to the variant image, most importantly, generalizing it so you can add it to any variant option of your choice by simply adding it to the JSON file. You guys were asking for these features and it really opens up the possibilities now to use it on your product page for multiple variant types um, and also any type of variant. So now you're not just stuck using it for colors, you can use it for really anything. I hope that helps. If you guys have any other suggestions or requests, please just let me know in the comments below. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you guys and I'll see you in the next one.